Gear Replicant, version 12247... 4487139 is a 2021 game developed by Square Enix and is a remake of a prequel to a game that I talked about a few months ago, Near Automata. So if you guys don't know my history with Near, I recently finished Near Automata a couple of months ago at this rate. If you want to see the original review of that, the link is right here if you want to check that out. Possibly after this video if you want. And just to give you guys the general feeling of how I felt when I finished Nier Automata. Nier Automata was that kind of game that you only play every couple of years or so. Like a game like this comes out every couple of years or so. That redefines what it is to play a video game and what it is to experience storytelling in a video game. It's a game that I remember saying in my original review that it's a game you have to play if you love video games to really truly experience some of the things they can do that you probably didn't realize that these games could do, you know, unlocking its full potential. Nier Automata is a game that showcases that. Also a little side note for people who have played Nier Automata like myself but haven't played uh, the original Nier or in this case the remake Nier Replicant, I will Talk about something kind of spoilery for people who don't or haven't played any of the Nier games. So I'm going to leave that towards the end for you people, you lucky people who have played Nier Automata. There's something I would kind of want to mention for people who have played that game. So yes, this is a remake. A remake of the 2010 Nier game that I remember seeing in shops when this game came out. Didn't know what the hell it was, judging by the front cover. I'd never played it, and I probably to this day might regret that decision because of what they were trying to do with this game and obviously the follow-up years and years later with Automata. In Near Replicant, you play as the protagonist who's trying to protect and cure his younger sister, Yona, who at the start of the game is currently dying from an unknown disease. And one of the things that really impressed me right from the get-go with Neo Replicant, maybe even more so than Near Automata, is the characters. I think this time around, uh, it's just a uniquely strange at times because it is a Nier game, a set of characters that get kind of pulled into the story. And the thing that makes it really different from Automata, in my eyes, is that it's a lot more personal. It's a lot more... more focus on a set of characters or a set number of people you can count on your hands, rather than in Automata's case where it was world-defining in terms of the consequences and in terms of the story itself. Kanye, who has been voiced by Laura Bailey, who originally voice this character in the 2010 game does a amazing amazing job at doing this character because this character is very complex but also kind of the funniest in the game it's not entirely a game that is built on a lot of humor nor was automata for that sake it did have moments especially in both games but this game has a lot more of a kind of serious and slower pace to it i would say and kanye is kind of there to break all that up and kind of throw in a bunch of swear words, throw in a bunch of shouting, throw, throw in a bunch of over-the-topness sometimes. She's definitely one of my favorite characters in the Nier series by far. We also have Liam O'Brien returning as Grimoire Vice, who is a book that is very intelligent and you shouldn't insult it. Again, they're all very strange and unique kind of characters, but they're super, super interesting, I found, right from the get-go. Again, combat very similar to Neo Automata, hack and slash kind of game, RPG mechanics, you can upgrade your weapons, you can attach different words that you collect in the world to upgrade your weapons and stats even more, or you can just go to the shop and reforge them so that they are nice and shiny. But yeah, combat is pretty much in the similar vein. It is a mixture of the hack and slash as well as the over-the-shoulder shooting, in a way, mechanics. I don't really know the right kind of definition for it, but like, again, if you played the previous game, it's a lot of a mixture of different things put into the battling system, all in different scenarios that you'll get to experience in this game. But as I've been mentioning, and as I've been comparing probably way too much, 
There is that familiar feeling that I get with Neo Replicant, a very familiar feeling with it. Those epic kind of camera angles or even strange camera angles that they'd like to force into different scenarios into the Nier games is here. The constant hopping between different genres in a video game is also here. And overall, there is a story here, and this is probably one of the main attractions for people who love Nier Automata. They want to know, is the story as good as it was in that game? I think that a lot of the things that affect the story are going to come up in a sec when I talk about the things I didn't like about the game. I actually think both games you can't really compare because they're, in a way, they are quite different. Nier Automata is a very, very fast-paced game, while this one is a slow burner and an extreme slow burner at that. But overall, once again, it is a very emotional story that has a lot to say. It's it's very much it knows what it's trying to say in this game and the way it produces that and shows that on screen like it did with Automata. It's just a fantastic way to represent a video game story in this way, in this kind of game. And that's all I can say about it for now. Another familiar feeling, the music. Music is, again, top notch. Songs that will stick in your head for weeks to come, or weeks after you finish this game. Again, it's music that most people, including myself, wouldn't listen to on a regular basis, but man, you will be forced to listen to this music in a good way while playing this game, and trust me, it will grow on you very, very quickly. I really enjoyed my time with Neo Replicant. It was one that I was really, really looking forward to, obviously because after playing Automata a couple of months ago, and absolutely loving that game to death, it was a game I was truly, truly, truly looking forward to, to see where this all began, and I was so excited to play this game, and I did enjoy it. However, this is a game <laughs> that is going to require a lot of patience from, I'm going to say, a lot of people. It's got, especially for people who haven't played the original, like myself. You're going to need a lot of patience. So I've been hinting for the majority of this review that this game is a slow burner. And it really, truly is a slow burner. I can't comprehend how much of a slow burner this game is. This game has a lot of back and forth with it. A lot. And there isn't really fast travel. You, you may unlock that later on in the game, but especially at the start of the game, you are going to be walking a lot. This game requires a lot of patience because there is a lot of repetition, especially when it comes down to traveling to locations. There's a lot of back and forth with this game. A lot of it, especially at the start. You get sent here, then you have to collect something. Go back to the town, and then you go back to the town, and they say, oh, there's another town, go over to that town. And then you do something there, and then you head back, and it's just constant. It is very, very constant. The payoff with this is that you slowly get to learn different areas of the map in a slower pace. So you can kind of learn about what this place is. And a lot of the locations, I would say, are really, really interesting. There's a couple that when you see them for the first time, you're like, okay, how does this work? This looks a bit strange. They are interesting locations, but the back and forwardness with this game is very extreme, I would say. There's gonna be... You can see that this gameplay loop, how much it has aged from, you know, old school RPGs to the new kind of school RPGs that we have nowadays. There's just a lot of that grinding, more or less, of walking to different locations to pick up one thing and then going back and picking up another thing. It's gonna happen a lot, and I'm gonna be entirely honest with you, it did get boring a lot of the time. This doesn't help as well with the side quests. Now the side quests, you don't have to do. But if you want to upgrade things, it's gonna cost money. And really the only way you can make money in this game, at least a lot of it or enough of it, to upgrade your weapons and buy things essentially, is you're going to have to do side missions. Now I thought maybe the side missions 
would be a different pace from what the main mission was doing all this time, especially at the start when I was thinking, oh my god, the main mission is just back and forth, back and forth. I'm learning things and there's a story sort of there, but uh, maybe the side missions do something different or they're a little bit more interesting. No, they're not. Um, <laughs> they, um, they're the same thing. They're mostly fetch quests. They're mostly people asking, can you get me six of ingredients or something and bring them back to me? Or can you collect me three of these things? Or can you collect me five wool or six pieces of meat and bring them back? And it it's just, it dawns on you for the first 10, I would say 10 to 12 hours of this game. It dawns on you that you, you don't know why. You're questioning the game of why why has this been brought back? Like, why have they remade this game? Like, for a game of this caliber, and also, if you have been playing Nero Thomasa, you'll be thinking, oh my god, what the hell is this? This is completely different. And I, I get that. I would say that the opening is not necessarily bad. It's just the style that I've done this in is slower than what you were expecting. I think that's the best way I can phrase it. I don't think it's bad at all. I don't think the opening hours... I, I didn't think of it as a bad video game. I think I was more shocked and surprised to see how slowly it builds to something more of an interest in the story. When it does build to that interesting part of the story, said takes a while to get there, but when it does, that's when it starts to click and you start to notice, okay, it's starting to get there now. We're starting to speed up things a little bit more the game is still slow but we're starting to pick up the pace a little bit more and when it does it it does get a lot more interesting i would take a very big guess but also a very confident prediction that probably around maybe half of the players that play this game maybe who have played near automata as well won't make it past the six hour mark because I think they might just find it too much with its back and forwardness. It's just to give you some idea, like settle in for a long one, but a slow one at that. And another thing that's kind of carried over from the Automata and now it was less of a issue because I didn't mention it in my Neo Automata review, but in Replicant, it seems to be even, like, more of an issue in this game. I found different types of cutscenes, there's like in-game or kind of pre-rendered cutscenes. They were at different volumes throughout the game. There was times when there was a character speaking and the music was a bit too loud and I couldn't really hear them. And that became even more of a problem when there were certain moments in the game where I was fighting like a boss and conversations were happening while the fight was going on and I couldn't really hear those conversations because the music and the sound effects and everything was just a bit too loud. I did check my sound settings and everything but I, I honestly truly felt like the mix was really off for the, the voice and the music especially. Just different volumes for different things. Sometimes the voices were too loud and the music was too quiet. Sometimes the music was too loud and the voices were too quiet, so you could kind of faintly hear things. It's not terrible, but it is very noticeable. Neo Replicant is a great, enjoyable game, but it won't be for everyone. That was something I completely dismissed with Automata. I saw that a lot of people saw that kind of game and dismissed it for what it looked like, and I immediately said, no, trust me, you have to play that game. With Neo Replicant, it's a lot more of a harder sell. If you liked Automata, I think you should play Neo Replicant. Just don't expect Nier Automata. This is different. This is a hell of a lot slower. It is dated gameplay in a way. If you can get past that though, I still think there's a great and memorable story here that has a great set of characters. And a familiar feeling with this game that would definitely kind of push you to get past the more slower, more back and forwardy bits with this game as well. I'm gonna give Neo Replicant an 8 out of 10. Okay, spoiler warning. If you have not played Neo Automata, don't watch this next bit. This is only for the exclusive club of the people who have played 
Nier Automata. If you want to see my review, you can check out my review of Nier Automata and play that game as well. But the, the last bit of this video is, is not for you, so go away. Shoo, go away. Oh, hi guys, welcome to the behind the scenes or extra footage, I guess, section of the review. So, throughout this review, I've been talking about how to not expect this to be like Nier Automata. And I truly, truly believe that. You you kind of have to go in without those kind of prerequisites of what you felt or what you expected to come with Nier Replicants that you experience in Nier Automata. I, I truly, truly believe that. And one of those things that most people will probably expect with Nier Replicants, as well as something that was in Nier Automata, is endings. Many endings. So yes, there is. Near Replicant has many endings. I won't say how many. It's not as crazy as it was in Automata, I'll give you that. But there is endings here. And one of the things I loved about Automata is that every single ending and every single playthrough you went through gave you that new perspective on the story. I loved playing through 9S after playing 2B's campaign. It was just seeing things in a different light made it interesting to go through those sections again. Even though I've already played those sections already, a new light or a different way of looking at things from a different person's perspective. I love that about Neo Automata. Neo Replicants has this. However, the playthroughs don't necessarily mean you're going to see things different. In fact, a lot of times you're just going to do the same thing. And there may be an odd bit of dialogue. Sometimes you'll get like little things that come up now and again, majority wise, each of the playthroughs. It kind of is like playing the game again, in, in a way. And that's what adds to that kind of slow burnness of this game. Because not only do you have the kind of full campaign of this game being a slow burn itself, but then you have to kind of replay it a little bit, which means going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, collecting things. And uh, there was a point where I was like, wow, I have to do all of that again. And the game kind of went, yeah, what do you expect? But also in a strange, weird way, it kind of made me appreciate Automata a little bit more in a weird way, because it shows the evolution of this series and this evolution of the kind of gameplay that is so unique and integral to the near games now that we kind of expect it. It shows how much they came from, like where they started with this multiple endings and different playthroughs and the different perspectives to where they got up to with Nier Automata. It's such a huge leap and a huge improvement when you play Automata over Replicant. But I also have this just appreciation for it. And it's not something that I would take into account for like giving this game a score. It's just a, it's just a side little thing. But I, I just appreciate that developers and the people who produced this game and created it and wrote it, it, it like, they took a chance on doing something like this in 2010. Like, a game like this coming out in 2010, and no wonder it didn't sell very well, because it just wasn't a game for everyone at all. But because of the recent success with Nier games, it's sort of like a look back or a time capsule to a game that just tried to do something different. And you know what? Maybe it was ahead of its time because of what happened with Neo Automata. They made something, okay, it didn't sell very well, but you could see what they were trying to do with this game. And then years later, they make Automata perfect that implementation of creating that story and that storytelling and the way they do it in these games. And it must have been an absolute tough sell to sell this game idea. If you look at it this way, if we didn't have the original poorly sold Nier in 2010, we may never have had Nier Automata. Nor Nier Replicant, the remake, and I get to experience two great games. Appreciate it.